Have you ever wondered how SpaceX could bounce back from a Starship rocket going up in flames? What if I told you their secret weapon is just water? Yes, you heard it right. It's water. In today's video, we dive into SpaceX's innovative new water deluge system that might just tip the balance in the modern space race against China. Stay tuned to understand how something as simple as water could hold the key to SpaceX's future success and why this race to the moon isn't just about rockets, but also the environment. It means the world to us if you subscribe, like, and leave a comment with any feedback and insight you have. The SpaceX Starbase Water Deluge System recently had its debut full test with a massive amount of water. When the Starship Super Heavy rocket takes off, its 33 Raptor engines generate an incredible 17 million pounds of force, resulting in a breathtaking surge of heat and thunderous noise. The company has implemented a smart solution to protect the rocket and launch pad from this extreme noise and heat during ignition and liftoff by using a spray system, creating a shield of water. Recently, they conducted a water deluge test where thousands of gallons of water were swiftly sprayed onto the launch pad in less than a minute. Although this volume is about half of what other launch platforms like NASA's SLS use in their deluge system. NASA's water release system, which disperses about 450,000 gallons of water on the mobile launcher and flame diverter, effectively manages the immense energy produced during a rocket launch. This indicates that SpaceX's deluge system has the potential to become even more potent in the future. It's important to highlight that the water system used for Starship's launch at Boca Chica operates quite differently from the systems used at Cape Canaveral. Unlike a sound suppression system, Starship doesn't require one. Instead, the design focuses on directing water precisely where it's needed to absorb the thermal energy from the engine plume. The purpose of the water pressure isn't to counteract the force. That's taken care of by the steel structure. Rather, the water serves to carry away the intense heat energy. Each watering hole needs enough pressure to keep the water flowing against the powerful pressure of the rocket exhaust, while the steel plate efficiently handles the majority of the exhaust pressure directly. After all, engineering a rocket with 33 engines and successfully launching it is an incredibly challenging task. History has shown us the difficulties such designs can pose, like the old Soviet Union's 30-engine N-1 moon rocket, which unfortunately never achieved a successful flight. In one tragic test in 1969, it exploded shortly after liftoff, resulting in the largest explosion in space history. This event goes to highlight the importance of a water deluge system and why it needs to perform optimally. The initial launch of Starship on April 20th taught SpaceX a tough lesson. They didn't have a water deluge system in place, which led to a significant crater on the launch pad and debris scattering far and wide when the rocket took off. As a consequence, an environmentalist group took action and filed a lawsuit against the FAA. They argued that the FAA had not adequately evaluated the potential negative effects on the surrounding ecosystems. After the environmentalist group filed its complaint, SpaceX took action and requested to be included as a co-defendant in the lawsuit. The private space company argued that the future of the Starship program was at risk and they should be involved in the legal proceedings. In their motion, SpaceX expressed concerns that the lawsuit could cause significant delays in obtaining further licensing for the Starship Super Heavy program. They emphasized the importance of their water deluge system to prevent such impacts in future launches. However, the environmental impact of the Starship remains a subject of debate. While SpaceX is working on addressing environmental concerns, they are also facing pressure to meet deadlines for the Starship program. The company aims to send astronauts to the lunar surface for NASA's Artemis III missions in either 2025 or 2026, marking the first human return to the moon since Apollo 17. Given this background, the success or failure of Starship and the water deluge system is of utmost importance. It holds immense consequences, not only for SpaceX as a company, but also for the broader ambitions of the U.S. government regarding human exploration. Especially since China's space program is making significant strides and has set ambitious goals for the future in what could be a new era of the space race. As a rival to other spacefaring nations, China aims to land a pair of astronauts on the moon before the end of this decade. This plan was formalized when Zhang Hailian, 
The deputy chief designer with the China Manned Space Agency, CMSA, presented a preliminary proposal at the 9th China International Commercial Aerospace Forum in Wuhan, Hubei Province, on July 12th. According to the plan, the intention is to have two astronauts undertake a short-duration mission on the lunar surface. During their time on the moon, the astronauts will conduct various scientific tasks and collect valuable samples. The proposed mission entails a crewed spacecraft and lander segments, launching independently using a pair of Long March 10th rockets that are still under development. The crew spacecraft and lander will launch separately and then rendezvous and dock in lunar orbit, preparing for a moon landing attempt. For this ambitious endeavor, a new generation crew spacecraft has been designed with a weight of 26 tons. This spacecraft boasts capabilities for deep space flight and high-velocity atmospheric re-entry. China has already conducted a full-scale boilerplate flight test of a version of this new generation spacecraft, demonstrating its capabilities in a relatively high orbit. The landing segment of this mission will consist of a lander and a propulsion stage, with a combined mass of approximately 26 tons. The lander is designed with the capability of making a soft landing on the moon, ensuring a safe touchdown for the astronauts. It will do this with the help of four 7,500 Newton variable thrust engines. After their mission on the lunar surface is complete, the lander will be responsible for returning the astronauts back to lunar orbit, where they will rendezvous with the crew spacecraft for the journey back to Earth. In addition to the lander, a lunar rover will also be a vital part of the mission. This rover will weigh 200 kilograms and will be designed to accommodate two astronauts with an impressive range of 10 kilometers. To aid astronauts in their lunar activities, a specialized spacesuit is being developed and will offer a working time of no less than eight hours. This advanced suit will facilitate essential tasks such as walking, climbing, driving the lunar rover, and operating various machines on the moon. At the heart of China's lunar ambitions is the Long March 10th rocket. It is an impressive three-stage vehicle featuring three five-meter diameter cores for its first stage. This powerful rocket will have the capacity to send an impressive payload of 27 tons to translunar injection, enabling it to carry significant payloads to the moon. China's space agency, KASIC, China Aerospace Science and Industry Corporation, has been actively working on the development of the Long March 10A variant, which will be a two-stage version specifically designed for low-Earth orbit missions. A test launch for this version is scheduled for 2027. One of the critical elements of the Long March 10th rocket is the 130-ton thrust kerosene liquid oxygen engines, which Kasich has been actively testing to ensure their reliability and performance. Senior lunar scientists have expressed confidence in China's capabilities, stating to state media in the past couple of years that China is well-positioned to achieve crude lunar missions before the end of this decade. Unlike a simple flags and footprints campaign, where astronauts visit the moon briefly and return, China's mission has more ambitious goals. China's lunar exploration plans extend beyond just landing on the moon. They aim to establish a moon base in the 2030s. This lunar base is known as the International Lunar Research Station, ILRS. By setting up the ILRS, China envisions a long-term presence on the moon, conducting extensive research and experiments to unlock the satellite's scientific potential. The country's space program is strategically laying the groundwork for the International Lunar Research Station through a series of robotic missions planned for the 2020s. In 2026, the Chang'e 7 mission will consist of an orbiter, lander, rover, and a mini-flying detector. This comprehensive mission will conduct a thorough exploration of the lunar surface, particularly the South Pole region. Following the Chang'e 7 mission, China has scheduled the Chang'e 8 mission for launch around 2028. This mission will be dedicated to testing resource utilization and 3D printing technology on the moon. Resource utilization involves utilizing local lunar resources to support future lunar missions, making them more sustainable and cost-effective. The 3D printing technology test mission aims to demonstrate the feasibility of using lunar materials for on-site construction, potentially paving the way for infrastructure development on the moon.
If everything goes to plan, China could beat NASA and SpaceX to the lunar surface, but Elon Musk will not accept defeat so easily. Only time will tell if SpaceX's water deluge system is successful and if it can help Starship finally reach orbit. What do you think? Can NASA's Artemis mission land on the moon before China? Let us know in the comments section below.